and welcome to my channel. So this is going to be my three or four part video session on inequalities. Now being a mathematics teacher for a number of years, it's one topic that my students seem to forget or overlook when they're doing other algebra topics such as equalities or graph sketching or simultaneous equations. So I thought I would spend a few videos just going through the basics of inequalities and exactly how to go about treating them in terms of not just how to solve them but in terms of also drawing the correct diagram and also in my third and fourth video I'll be looking at graphical regions. Okay, so let's get started. So my first question is to write down integer solutions for the following inequalities. I'll give you five seconds to think, what is an integer? Well, hopefully you all know this, an integer is a whole number. That is a really important fact across the board in mathematics, not just in this particular topic. So you need to know an integer is a whole number. So how do we show the solutions for the first one? Well, x is greater than 5. Again, if you're not sure about the crocodile symbols, have a look in the blue box over on the right hand side. And the way we answer this is as follows. We write x, remember your curly x's, equals, now it will be 6, 7, and so on, all the way up to infinity. Now, if you've been doing your GCSE or IGCSE English, you'll know that three dots is called an ellipsis. And we use that to represent the idea that these numbers go on forever. Eight, nine, 10, all the way up to infinity. Now, why haven't we included five? Well, look at the blue box very carefully. You'll see it says more than five not including five itself. So this is why question B is a little bit different. What we have to do there is include the six. So y equals six. And remember it's less than or equal to. So we go downwards, six, five, four. And again, that ellipsis. You can put two or three numbers as long as the ellipsis is there to show on it goes on forever. So using the knowledge we've picked up from questions A and B, see if you can do question C. Now this time it doesn't go into infinity, that's my clue, so there's only a set number of answers. Have a go at question C. Okay, well hopefully you didn't fall for any tricks. Z can be three, four, five, six. Again, you could write all the numbers out. I'm gonna use my ellipsis, but at the end of the ellipsis, I will put a 10. Is that correct? Okay, you didn't fall for the trick. It shouldn't be a 10 at all. It should be a nine. The reason is, look at the blue box, it says there that it's less than 10, not including 10. So that's a very, very important point. Now for this question down below, it's a little bit more tricky, but again, the key thing to do, like a lot of algebra topics, is to get the X or the Y or the Z on its own. Now, this time we have two X is greater than five, so we have to think, what's the opposite of timesing by two? That's what two times x means. So we have to, on both sides of the inequality, divide by two. That then gives us x, because two divided by two is one, so that's one x, or x is greater than five divided by two, which is 2.5, like so. Now, we have to think we're looking for integer solutions. Remember, an integer means a whole number answer. Therefore, our answers will be x is equal to 3, 4, all the way to infinity, 
with our ellipsis. Okay, 2.5, of course, is not a whole number answer. Okay, have a go at part B and see how you get on there. Okay, so you should have divided by 3 this time because we've got a 3 in front of the y. That then gives us y is less than or equal to 2 because 6 divided by 3 is 2. So the answers for y, be careful, it's a less than or equal sign. So that means y equals... 2, so 2 itself, 1, 0, all the way to negative infinity, all the way downwards. Okay, so if you're getting the hang of this, um, have a look at question C. So this time we've got an inequality with two numbers on both sides, but again you still approach it in exactly the same way. So, for this one, again, we have a 2 in front of the z, so we divide everything by 2. We're dividing all sides of the inequality by 2. So that leaves z here. That leaves 5 here. And here, remember, you need less than or equal sign. Well, 3 divided by 2 is 1.5 like so. So again, like question C in the earlier examples, we now need to consider exactly what the integer solutions are. So, z, well what's that going to equal to? Is it going to be 1.5? Well no, because that's not a whole number answer, so the next biggest will be 2. The way I tend to think of it is what numbers lie between 1.5 and 5 that are whole numbers. That must be 2, 3, 4, and 5. Ah, I almost caught you out. Of course, 5 is not included. Why is that the case? Because we have the less than sign, not less than or equal to. Now, if you want some more practice on that, I've put two questions on the right-hand side for you to have a go at. So have a go at those, pause the video if you need to, and see if you can work that out. Okay, now just to check your correct answers, you should always do this. X is less than or equal to 1. So again, the answers will be X equals 1, 0, minus 1, all the way to infinity. And then for this one, again, we divide by 3 this time. So we'll get here 1.3 occurring. I know a lot of you students love your decimals. Less than y, which is less than or equal to 2. So that means for that inequality, there is only one answer that can work. And that would be y equals 2. So in that case, there's only one answer. And that does happen occasionally on inequalities questions. So don't think you've gone wrong if there's only one answer. Sometimes the inequality is written in such a way so that you can only get one answer. Okay, so my second slide is showing these inequalities on a number line. And often these topics are linked. So they may get you to solve an inequality, which is what we'll look at in the second video and sometimes they'll get you afterwards to then draw it on a number line. So the first one we're going to do is to represent x is greater than five on a number line. So you have the number line in front of you. Now the key thing to remember, and it's the most important part, is your closed and open circles at the bottom of the slide. So if it's a less than or equal sign, or it can be the other way around as well, so greater than, or equal to, that means it's a closed circle. So on your number line, you draw in a filled in dot. If, however, it's a greater than sign or just a less than sign, then it's an open circle. You do not fill in the dot. So for our questions up here, x is greater than five. We find five on our number line. Then we draw an open circle. Don't fill in the dots. 
And because we're greater than five, we take an arrow going to the right, like so, because we're getting bigger. Six, seven, eight are all bigger than five. For the next question, a bit trickier, it's one of those combined inequalities. So we treat it in the same way. We go to our three, we put an open circle because it's a less than sign. We go to eight and we put a closed circle. Not the best circle in the world, but we'll get there. And this time X lies between them, therefore we put a line in between, hopefully with a ruler, between three and eight. And then we have our answer like so. Okay, so the key thing to remember, you're open and closed circles and that depends on the inequality sign. Again, open is greater than or less than, a closed circle is less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to. Those are the key points. Now, have a look at slide three. So this is questions two to four. Again, you need to use the skills you've learned in the first 10 minutes to work out the questions. I'll help you with the first one. So question 2a, we have two. It's getting bigger because it's going to the right. So for question 2a, we write x asks us to use x for the variable, notice x is greater than two. It's not greater than or equal to two because it's an open circle. So question two wants you to do that. Question three wants you to draw the number line for the inequalities. So question three A, you draw your number line. So I'll draw three and four and five and six and seven, eight and so on. Okay, so we want a filled in circle. And because we're getting greater than, we want to go in this direction. I'll put in another number there. So that's all it's asking us to do for question 3a. And this is question 2a. Now, if you finish those tasks, have a go at question five, six, seven, and eight. So they're a bit more tricky. Read the question carefully and make sure you answer correctly, true or false, okay? You should always read the question carefully and make sure you give the answer they're expecting. Don't say yes or no. It's much better to use true or false. Okay, so, have a look through the answers. So all the answers are there from the slide three and slide four, going from question two to question eight. So whenever you do any exercise, you have to make sure you mark your answers. If you're not sure about the answers that are given, go back to slide one and two. They will then show you exactly how to go about each question. I've taught you each individual skill. Okay, so that's an introduction to inequalities in terms of using the correct inequality symbol, or as my year sevens would call it, a crocodile symbol. Draw it on an actual number line itself, and then do some worded questions, trying to then work out what the question is asking. In my next video, I'm going to then look at solving inequalities. Um,